Hello everyone. In this video I want to go over how to install an IBM 3270 terminal emulator on Mac OS Catalina. After looking around for a decent open source 3270 terminal emulator, I found the TN 3270 terminal emulator which was developed by Peter DiCamillo in the mid 80s at Brown University. However, according to the documentation, since this is a 32-bit application developed using Apple's Carbon framework, this will not run on this latest version of Mac OS. Apple has decided to drop all 32-bit application support, including 64-bit Carbon applications. As such, the author has decided not to rewrite the application, but has asked developer support if someone is interested in rewriting it. We will instead be using the open source X3270 terminal emulator that was originally developed by Robert Viduya at Georgia Tech and originally called 3270 Tool. This original application was then ported to X11 R4 by Jeff Sparks and given the name X3270. Another developer by the name of Paul Mattis has been maintaining and extending the X3270 tool since 1993 and has contributed other derived tools such as the C3270, WC3270, S3270, TCL3270, and PR3270. During his tenure, other developers that have made significant contributions are Don Russell, who added RPK name support, and Dick Altenburn, who added DFT file transfer support. In this session, I'll focus on how to compile from source the X3270 terminal on Mac OS Catalina. So let's get started. Okay, so the first thing you got to do is we got to download it, right? So we got to go to download. And when we go there, we notice that there's, of course, binaries for Windows, but there's none for no built binaries for Mac OS or any uh, Linux distribution. But that's okay. They do include the source code. So we're going to go to SourceForge. And when we get there, it's going to try to download it, but we don't want that, actually. We want to go back to the project main page. So I'm going to hit cancel here. And the way I do this is I just go to the URL up here, and I delete everything after x3270 because this is the file section. So I'm going to delete that, and I'll include the link in the description below. Okay, so we're going to go to SourceForge, and you're going to click on the tab the code tab. So this should give us the repo that contains all the code. All right, so we're going to go ahead and copy this. And here on my terminal, I'm in my Git workspace, and we're going to clone it in here. So I'm going to paste it in here. And while that's going on, let me go back to the documentation. So I'm going to hit, keep hitting back over here, and I'm going to click on documentation. Um, install instructions is under miscellaneous, and how to build from source code on Unix. So I'm going to click on that, and quickly it tells us building on Unix or Sigwin. Um, so we have to go to the section that says how to install Unix binary since Mac OS is Unix. Uh, it says make install, so we should be able to go directly to that directory, but it's best to always read all the documentation before you jump into something, and I did already, so I'm going to skip to the important part. So I went all the way to the bottom. There's notes for Ubuntu, Sigwin, and there's uh, notes for Mac OS, and the first thing that it tells you is you're going to need to install XQuartz, and that's the X11 uh, server for Mac OS. And that's a dependency, so we need to do that first. So if you're, you don't have Quartz installed on your Mac, you need to install it. I'm going to use the Brew Package Manager, so I'm going to say Brew. Actually, I don't know if it's a cask or not, so I'm going to say Brew Search X Quartz. I'll give it a second here. Okay, it's a cask. So now we can say Brew, oops, Brew Cask Install. X quartz. Okay. 
Okay, X Quartz has finished installing. Um, let's go to the first step over here. Notes from Catalina here. So we need to export and then run configure and then make. Okay, so let's go into the directory that X3270 was cloned to, which is X3270-code. Let me clear to the top so we can make this easier to read. So in here we have all the files that we're going to build. Okay, so the first command we're going to run is, we're just going to copy and paste here, export. We're going to copy and then paste it into my terminal. Okay, that's basically appended the, the path to X11 uh, to the environment path. And now we're going to actually compile. I'm sorry, configure. So we're going to copy this here. Paste it in our terminal, hit enter, and that's going to give us a bunch of output here. Okay, that's done. And now we're going to type make, oops, make. And actually, we're going to go ahead and type in make install, because we want to actually install it on this machine. So what this does is it'll, it'll go ahead and finish compiling and uh, copy over the binaries so that I can go ahead and start using it. Okay, it finished, comp it finished uh, doing its thing, but I see a bunch of errors here. Permission denied. I'm wondering if I have to run this as sudo. Well, actually, it's set to just run make. Maybe I should have done that first. Let's just run make first. Okay, this time it didn't complain. Actually, I believe just running make is enough. I should just follow the instructions. And I think we're good, actually. How do we know? Let's just try it out. Forget it. Let's just, let's just try this out. Let's go to exports. So you're going to have to start up exports first. And this will bring up a terminal. Uh, okay. Uh, I'll bring up the terminal. There you go. It's kind of tiny. Well, I can't make it bigger. Well, what you're going to type in there is you're going to type in X3270. And there we go. So it did It did build. So my mistake, you didn't need to do a make install. I guess that was for other Unix, other Unix installations, but not Mac OS. So just running make is good enough. Okay, so we know that it's running now. Let's test it out. Um, I'm going to put this to the side. And I'm going to go ahead and run my local Docker container for uh, the TK4 minus uh, Hercules mainframe emulator. I want to see if it's already running. Oh, I don't even have Docker running. OK, Docker is running. We see the little green light there. So let me. Let me do a Docker run. And if you go back to my previous episode, you know, I go over how to run the actual container. If you don't have it, if you haven't watched the first episode, uh, go ahead and quickly watch it uh, either or just follow the instructions in the, the description. And they give you, and I have links for where to go get this Docker container so you can run a local terminal. All right, let's go ahead and get started run our docker container here okay and let's give it a few seconds for it to start up and now that we have this terminal emulator let's open up the little site toolbar here and I'm gonna change the font because this other one is too small there we go I believe it, we should be good. So I'm going to go ahead and click connect and then localhost, and there it is. And in a second, we should see a login prompt. There we go. Let's go ahead and log in, Herc01. And then I still have the default password. See you later. And we're in. 
So unfortunately, yes, you do need to run X quartz first. Then from there, from the you have to open up a terminal and then start up X3270. But at least you don't have to, you have in Catalina, you have an option to have a terminal emulator that you can use to log into uh, a mainframe. All right, that's it for this video. Thank you for watching. Thank <laughs> you.